What's up, party people? Welcome to Letters from the Long Box, episode four, where we answer your viewer mailbag questions from uh, the Geekosity Facebook page, along with questions from Lords of the Long Box. Uh, this video posts every Thursday, so I don't need these headphones. Why do I have these headphones on? Nobody's talking to me inside the headphones, but anyway. Um, Let's get right to it, boys and girls. Uh, this is something uh, that we do every Thursday where we pick out viewer questions that you leave or leave on the Letters of the Long Box video from the previous Thursday or that you drop in the Geekosity page that Mikey Sutton and his friends and myself were part of. And he, Mikey Sutton, picks these questions and he answers it. And we got a good, like, uh, six, seven from Lords of the Long Box and a few from Geekosity. So if you want your question read on the air, leave it in the comments after the video posts, and then we'll sift through. And then if you get uh, your question answered, you get a Marvel No Prize. So it's in the mail uh, if you're looking for it. <laughs> so uh, congratulations, everybody got selected. Uh, first off, these are from letters. These are from Lords of the Long Box from the video. So as I said on last night's video, I gave a preview of some of the people who had their uh, questions answered. So let's get right to it, boys and girls. Emerald Knight 041 asks, great channel, guys. Do you think we'll see America Chavez, Ruby Williams, and the Young Avengers? What an apropos question because we actually dropped that last night. Uh, we dropped Miss America, America Chavez, as well as the Young Avengers on our long-term spec last night. Ruby Williams, we, we talked about a while ago, but Mikey's official answer is yes, they'll be roaming around the Disney Plus universe. So there you go. Congratulations, General Knight 041. Great question. Um, too bad we didn't answer it yesterday. <laughs> but anyway, we wanted to see it today, but you can, I guess your, answer, your question got answered when you saw the show yesterday because you were I saw you in the live chat. Uh, the next question is from another Lords of the Longbox viewer. This is from Vit Vitty. Awesome video. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> wow, this is a long one. So bear with me, guys. Einstein once told the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Um, sure. I think that's just a general comment, but we kept it in there anyway because it's fun. But it's a long question. I will try my luck for the third time at that question because it interests me the most. Uh, Mikey and Tim. Any updates on the Gambit Disney Plus series? I'm very excited for the Gambit series as a modern Western. Are there any plans where and when Gabin, Ga <laughs> Gambit will end up on the big screen? And what future is planned for him after the Disney Plus introduction? Thank you for the long, long question, Vidvidi, and the awesome Einstein quote. <laughs> Gambit will be joining X-Men after his character is fleshed out on the Disney Plus series. He could appear sooner in an X-Men movie if a director or screenwriter finds a significant place for him. We all know Gambit, is, Gambit has been a long, long gestating production nightmare. Different directors have been attached. The sole person that has been kind of attached to it is Channing Tatum. Uh, he kind of stepped away from it as well. But once Feige took over, all things started kind of getting renewal. I don't know if it'll still be uh, Channing Tatum, but Gambit is a very popular character in the Marvel uh, comics and in the MC, even the small part that he had in that horrible X-Men movie, people still dug him for what it was. So you never know, man. Uh, so yes, he well appears, you know, we just, it's just a matter of time. Uh, you say that for pretty much all the major X-Men characters, it's just a matter of time, the right project and where they fit into Feige timeline. Uh, the next question up is from our man, Anthony Debo. Here comes Debo. What up, TiVo and Mikey? When is the next time we will see the Punisher? And will he make it to the big screen? And will Johnny Bernthal return if he does? Mikey says, I'm hearing that the Punisher will have some ties with Moon Knight's past, but I don't know if he will appear on the Moon Knight series. From what I've been told, Frank Castle will join Johnny Blaze, the Midnight Suns, and Heaven Feige wants John Bernthal to return. Um, so there you go. So John, I mean, I think when John Bernthal came onto uh, Netflix as a Punisher, everybody was like, "That is the perfect casting for it." He's he's got this 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 character he plays where he has this simmering rage about him. The only time I have seen him where he doesn't play this character is in the excellent film Ford versus Ferrari, where he plays Lee Iacocca. He absolutely nailed it. And that really uh, impressed me with John Bernthal's acting range when he played Lee Iacocca in Ford versus Ferrari. If you haven't seen that movie, I think it's available on um, on cable now. I just watched it again last night. Fantastic film. One of the best movies of the year when it came out. Next question is our friend from uh, YouTube, Sassy Pants. If the film Eternals is successful, which I know it well, are there also going to be teaming up are they also going to be teaming up with the Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four, and many future heroes? It all depends on how well they are received by Marvel Studios. But Marvel Studios has huge plans 
for the Black Knight. Not our Black Knight, but the Black Knight that's played by Kit Harrington. They want to spin him off into his own kind of uh, solo projects as well as team projects. We're hearing Excalibur along with the Captain Britain Corps, so that's fun. So Kit Harrington is a big actor, so they're going to build on his Game of Thrones. Jon Snow, he's got a huge following. So whatever happens with Eternals, Black Knight is going to be featured prominently and hopefully they spin him off into his own world so there you go uh the next question is coming from uh this interesting name oh no 2100 <laughs> have you heard anything about scarlet spider slash ben riley possibly being in a sony and or mcu movie as terrible as the clone saga was getting war flashbacks from it i wasn't even born in the 90s ben riley was one of the best things to come from it and i'd love to see him in a movie same goes with kane Thanks. Thank you. Oh, no. 2100. Um, unlikely because so many fans griped about the clone saga that, you know, I don't think they if they were to bring him back, totally different timeline, maybe totally different character. But the folks of Marvel know how how many people pan the clone saga. It's kind of similar to Ultimatum. Everybody hated multi ultimatums. Oh, all that stuff you heard about Ultimatum becoming a movie. False. So Ultimatum, clone saga. Right there, two and two together as horrible storylines. Uh, our man, that boy Steve. I love that you guys keep doing these, and I hope you keep it going. Thank you. We will try. As long as you guys keep on asking questions, we'll keep on doing this. Going to try a more vague version of the question I asked last time. Any Star Wars news, you guys can share it all, or maybe updates on stuff you guys reported on on the past, in the past. Um, other than a live action Rebel series coming on Disney Plus with Thrawn, nothing at the moment. But we've been kind of reporting little things here and there throughout the months. We've talked about a uh, Thrawn live action, Mara Jade live action. We talked about Ashoka Tano, all these little things. And they're little nuggets that we got here and there. Star Wars scoops are really hard to come by because the, the, the Star Wars Lucasfilm team is so much smaller than, say, Marvel Studios or Warner Brothers or DC. There's a ton of people. Or not a ton, but relatively a ton of people compared to how many people are in the Star Wars world. So it's kind of hard to get those leaks. But more and more stuff is coming out as more and more stuff gets developed for Disney+. Plus. You, you notice after the, the success of The Mandalorian... You go back to the you go back to the same well you got the water from that was so successful they they see potential for tons of different series and then I just read recently they're going to start writing the treatment for the next trilogy of films so there you go man so anything is possible now that you have Disney Plus thank you for the question our next uh, question is from Zhao Long I hope I said that right Zhao Long Li any news about the Hellstrom TV series I want to see. The show right now together with Agents of Steel season seven. Kevin Feige is reshuffling the Who horrors and he'll uh, Mikey will have an update soon. Matter of fact, as we're filming this on Thursday, I think either last night or this morning, uh, Hulu dropped the um, logo for Hellstrom. So the whole logo for the show. I'm assuming uh, I think some most of it got filmed already. So they still have to finish filming it once the coronavirus and uh, they're slowly allowing productions to come back in Hollywood. And uh, uh, more importantly, uh, I think out in Czechoslovakia, where they're filming like uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier and some other places. So now that they dropped the logo, I would expect some type of teaser trailer or something maybe next month when they, everybody does their virtual San Diego Comic-Con. So, but Kevin Feige is reshuffling the Hulu horror stuff. So we, he's trying, he wants to kind of salvage what was the plans that were laid there by Jeff Loeb when Jeff had this kind of plan of what he wanted to do. And then unfortunately it didn't work out and he left or quit or whatever the story is. But either way, Feige's in control now and Feige loves the supernatural horror stuff. All right, that's all the questions from the Lords of Lombox channel. Let's go over to our friends over at Geekosity. Joss Thomas asks, asks, is it possible to get an ad adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns with Michael Keaton? Uh, probably not, as uh, Donna Justice took so much from it and failed spectacularly at the box office. So if you don't remember, uh, Batman vs. Superman was basically a Dark Knight Returns. You had a future version of Batman and Ben Affleck. They even put gray in his hair to make him look older. So it ended up being like the Dark Knight Returns plus the death of Superman. Spoiler, if you haven't seen Batman or Superman yet, but I, my guess is the executives at AT&T, Warner Brothers want to steer away from the Dark Knight Returns as much as they can since they just done it. They've done the animated version, part one and two. So 
It's kind of like, let's just move on. It's like the Infinity Gauntlet, you know, the saga, you tell a story once and, you know, I don't know if you can get back to it again for another 10, 15 years, but every, you know, in the comics, the Infinity Stones pop up like every five years, it seems like. Uh, next question is from Rafael Magaldi. I hope I said that right. Rafael Magaldi. Are we going to have Speed and Wicked appear on WandaVision? Yes, they are. That's that's a simple three question, uh, three answer question right there. Three, a three word answer to your question. Yes, they are. And Speed and Wiccan were also on our long-term spec for the Young Avengers show that we dropped last night. If you haven't seen it, check out the video from yesterday, Wednesday. We had a long-term spec list for uh, end up being a Young Avengers. All right. Last question of the night, the day. I don't even know. what day. It's like Thursday, maybe? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Nick Taylor. Originally is a question from Nick Taylor. Originally, you said Peter, I'm assuming he's mean Peter Parker, would play a big part in the Fantastic Four. Is that still the plan? Yes. Reed Richards is being developed as Peter Parker's mentor. Now, when we say mentor, we uh, it's, it's uh, we talk about this in the past where it's a scientific mentor. If you remember in the Spider-Man films, Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark character was kind of Peter's, um, not only his superhero mentor, but also his science mentor, right? Because, you know, who, I mean, because Peter Parker is a very smart young kid you know even in the comics you know he would develop his own web serum same in the movies and so uh robert downey jr's tony stark character was kind of the peter parker mentor for him in the movies now you need a big brain to replace him who would be that big brain besides shuri yeah you know you know shuri's far away though introduce reed richards he could be his science mentor to help them with all this gadgets and whatnot so that's fun um, cause you know, if you think about it in the comics, Spider-Man and a Fantastic Four, one of the first times they met was in like issue one of Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four appeared. So there you go, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions for myself and Mikey, please leave a comment in the video, be- uh, leave a comment in the section below after the video post, after you watch this video or while you're watching, you can ask the questions. And then if you get chosen, we will answer your questions next Thursday around the same time. It posts around five, six o'clock. I don't know. Whenever I get a chance to doing it, but I really appreciate you guys. This has been really fun answering your questions. Sometimes there's some scoops in here and you get some good stuff. So feel free to ask whatever you like, Marvel, DC or Star Wars related. Till next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.